Hey, so I got a bit of a story time with this one. Like, I don't make myself a stranger to I make chip tunes. I really do enjoy old consoles and getting into the nitty gritty of the sound engines. And this led me towards synthesizers because for me at the time it was like expanding on that sound cart and making different sounds that no games ever had before. So the first synthesizer I got at the time was the Monologue and I spent hours just making crazy sounds with it. Then I got a second synthesizer that I could pair with the two and I just kept collecting gear and acquiring new bits and I had a really cool time until I hit another limitation which isn't as fun which is how do I keep all this stuff set up because really I would build everything and pack it all down when I'm finished and that wasn't much fun and then you would be trying to find the right cable to go with the right machine you will be uh, trying to have everything connected or if you want to change something you would be unraveling the cable mess of spider web and yeah it wasn't as fun so I was sort of in the market for some way to keep all my hardware set up that I could keep playing with and enjoy it. and I didn't have to worry about set up because it's already done and this led me down a few avenues but for at the time I was living in an apartment so there was that constraint as well as I was on a bit of a budget so I wanted to find something that was relatively cheap and fit for what I was looking for and in the end I couldn't really find what I was looking for so I decided to go down the DIY route and this is the actual table that I built a couple of years ago and it's been with me ever since it's traveled interstate and it's been such a fantastic thing to have in my studio so I thought I'd cover what I really enjoy about this table and if I was to build it again what would I add or take away to make it better so let's get straight into it Now, why did I go down the table route? Because we do have shelves, we do have stands. There are a lot of stands on the market. And I was sort of in a bit of constraint because I had one part, which was I was living in an apartment at the time and I needed to make the best use of space I could. And the other part was, it's a bit of a budget thing as well. Like some of these stands that we get for from the music industry and that seem to come out a bit of a premium. So at the time I was a bit of budget conscious and I really wanted to get something that was suited for me. So first things I started with was use the old Ikea hack. We all love doing that on YouTube. Just go see what I could find at Ikea and see what I could leverage, but I couldn't find anything that sort of fit what I wanted or was too big or too small. Then I decided to start looking at op shops and secondhand furniture stores and around, but I really couldn't find anything that was fit for purpose until I was at Bunnings one day and they had this massive pine panel that I'm like, I reckon I could cut that up and make that into the full desk. So I took some measurements and if you don't know, Bunnings is a warehouse, hardware warehouse in Australia. They sell all our wood and tools and that. Uh, but they also have a bit of a service side to them and usually in the metro Bunnings if you've got a big one is they'll have a place where they can cut these panels So I took some measurements and took it home and then started drawing up the idea where I could Try and get the maximum desk space I could have with one of these panels and I drew it up and took it back and got them to cut all the wood It was three cuts so it didn't cost me anything to get it cut and then really it was the top the two sides and then the underneath and the underneath need a little bit cut off so they could fit underneath the tabletop. Along that I got some screws, some glue and I had some tools at home. And that was another thing with the project because I was in an apartment area it's really I couldn't do anything massive or big scale or takes a long time to build. I need to get something there and built and ready to go because I didn't want to disturb the neighbors. Uh, I didn't have access to tools. I think I really just had a drill and a saw and a little hand plane to help out clean off the ends and some sandpaper. And really you can do a lot with a little. And the big one was uh, making sure I built it when I didn't disturb anyone. So if you are planning to build anything in an apartment, just make sure you're doing it through the day. Don't disturb your neighbors. And if you do feel concerned, just go ask them and say, hey, I just want to put some things together. Just be uh, courteous to people. So when I decided to build this table, I pretty much got all the tools together and I did it over a work day. So I knew that no one was going to be in the building. And really I, like, I wanted to do some nicer joins, but I could only really do a butt join. But a butt join is not really the strongest that we can have. So I decided to 
I had some angle brackets and I squared up the edge and then I could drill holes along and then add screws but I didn't want ugly screw heads sticking out so there's a neat little trick that you can use with dowel and then you glue in the dowel and trim off the top and make it flush to at this sort of like dowel joint looking style and it does look nice when you do it and you do have that benefit of it's screwed so it's not going to move about when it's drying so you can pretty much keep working on the table as you go through and I had the whole table built within that day and Next I decided to add a shelf because it doubled my table space. So I had some hardware from Bunnings. I got uh, two heavy duty drawer extenders and I got a thinner panel because I knew I didn't want big bulky items under on the shelf. I wanted the big bulky items on top where I could get access to them. And that, uh, yeah, it didn't take long to install. And as you see through this build, I did add a lot of features as I was building it because this was more of an ad hoc design. I would build one thing and then I'll measure it up and then add that other thing and then, oh, it needs this, so I'll get the thing to do that. And really, the initial cost for this table was under 100 bucks, and I was pretty happy with that. So when it was done, I put it in the corner. I had all my gear set up on it. I was pretty chuffed at that point, and I had a lot of fun with that setup. But with anything as a studio it is a living space so you're always tweaking and changing but having access to everything turned on at the click of a button and not having to figure out where cables are and just doing all that stuff just made it such more beneficial to my sort of mindset. So when I moved up to central Queensland I decided to bring it along with me and I've added a few more features since then like I did add this uh, lean-to which uh, extended the table surface on top quite a bit so I could have more devices up top. I've added a cable tray on the back so I can easily access all the power bricks and do all the um, cabling and making sure it's clean. Mind you it's been moved around a couple of times so I probably need to go back there and just make sure everything's still nice and tidy. Uh, I bought some snake cables because I have extended this is where the synths are, that's where the computer is and really because I work on computers all day I try and not look at computers when I'm doing it but I do have like space bar close by so I can hit record but yeah it's just been this really nice space where I can create wherever I want and everything's connected um, extending with patch bays definitely made this a whole lot more funner to work with and yeah it's sort of like this desk has been a really good start but it's sort of getting to this pain point like this um, extension on top I would much prefer that to be part of the build and like the table area like I was working in an apartment when I first built this so definitely having a thinner tabletop was much more beneficial to give me more room in the apartment but I think if I was to do this again I'll pick two of the larger synths to make that measurement distance so I could have a stacked version of two and also I do like the uh, lip that I have so cables for the synths at the bottom part of the shelf can slide under. Uh, didn't factor in how high some of these cables are so I think next time I'll raise that up. But I think that could be a permanent part of this table top and it'd be like a two-stepped table. Uh, I definitely think it could be a bit longer as well. Definitely for this space like if I didn't need to have the shelf I would extend it all the way down to the wall and then I could have more of the stuff that's on the shelf underneath. And the next thing I think this table would really benefit from is making this as a self-contained sound system. So going back from my ideas with like NES and chiptune, it's like all the instruments are contained within a box. Having a table set up where all the ins and outs and audio capture and uh, the brain, everything is in one spot. So I can just come to the table, a bunch of audio monitors, I keep all my patch bays and rack in a little area down here, have the audio interface, and I might leave a little space open on the table because then I could have like, I could plug my computer into a little USB dock which goes into the audio interface, or someone can bring their laptop around and then they can plug their laptop in and start capturing sounds of this table. And it's all like this space where we can play with ideas and share and explore so it's definitely been something worthwhile that I've built and it's one of those pieces that I do enjoy sitting around and it's probably better than the kitchen table. <laughs> definitely had a lot of fun times played on here. 
I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought because yeah we can talk about all these boxes and how cool they are and that but all this utility stuff doesn't get much attention and I really feel not the funnest part but it can definitely be exciting to actually set up a space that's really enjoyable to work in and I think that would be really useful for other people so I was thinking I'm going to draft up this table as a PDF so if you wanted to look how I built it or how you could build one you could get those plans and work on them so there'll be a link below uh, it's a bit of a intermediate project building a table but building it with the mindset of using other people's tools like Bunnings and with a few other hand tools you could have a table like this or you can modify it to fit your situation as well so don't feel that you have to follow what I'm doing as well uh, I'll put a link below for that one and yeah I hope you enjoyed this little one and if you think this is going to be useful for someone else definitely give it that thumbs up because it tells the algorithm to point it to other people and I hope this video does help out that person that is looking to set up their creative space and how they can start working towards having a much more funner experience with their machine. So yeah, if you're more interested in that content, definitely stick around because I'm really looking forward to making more content like this and I hope to see you next time.